Last week, we made a video about how skill-based matchmaking wasn't the only problem with Modern Warfare 3 and why the games are getting a lot harder. No. So the whole point in the video was basically to say there are other factors at play, armory tokens being one of them, and people are actually trying to win a lot more now to actively get unlocks. Now, some people didn't really understand that. Most of you did, but most some people thought that... I was saying skill-based matchmaking wasn't a problem. It, of course, is a problem. There's not a dimension in the multiverse where I do not think skill-based matchmaking is a problem. Of course, the, of course it is. But it's other factors at play. And the main thing that people are noticing now is something called EBMM or EOMM, engagement-based matchmaking or otherwise known as engagement optimized matchmaking. So what is it? We're gonna talk about that in this video and basically say and inform you how it is affecting you. First of all, we need to talk about what engagement-based matchmaking actually is. And it is simply the process of you being matched with players who play like you. So for example, people who have similar objective times, win rates, weapon classes, like SMGs or ARs or snipers, weapon, uh, like just general weapon stats, people who've got like really high stats on pistols, for example, or launchers. You'd go into other lobbies with people using pistols and launchers a bit more often. You've got people who play more passively. If you're a camper, you're probably getting campy lobbies. If you are aggressive, you're probably getting quite aggressive lobbies as well. And then, of course, there is active in-game management, which I will touch on as well, because I am very passionate about that issue, you could just say. So, yeah, it's really annoying. So EOMM has a patent as well. Uh, this is another factor where if you buy skins, bundles, battle passes, basically anything which involves buying COD points, the game will slightly tone down some of the effects of this. And if you don't buy them, you're going to be the canning fodder for those who are. So what you'll find is a lot more people are playing the objective more because, of course, they need to win. So now people are getting put in lobbies where it's not just their KDs and their score per minutes, which is skill-based matchmaking. They're also getting put in lobbies now based on how they play. If you play hard objective, you're now getting put in lobbies with other people who play the objective just as hard as you. That can be a bit stressful considering the fact that players like me who have always played the objective now suddenly have to deal with everyone playing that way, which is great, except it keeps on putting me in lobbies with people who couldn't give two shits about the objective. Keeps on putting me with people who believe they need to be in team deathmatch, but I don't want to play team deathmatch because my KD is on the scoreboard and it's a big deal and I want to play game modes which have loads of XP and I can get loads of kills and I don't necessarily have to play the objective. Like, no, people like that just need to be in team deathmatch and just fucking stay there, right? But of course, that's not how that's not how the EBMM sees it. No, absolutely not. Those players, they're gonna get put in lobbies with people like me, who that one person or two people have got to carry the other four who don't give a shit. In other games, it was very common to see this happen with one or two active players playing the objective and then the rest of them getting like 30, 40 kills and zero objective time, zero captures. Not like that. And also finishing negative as well, which is yeah, that's another thing. So, it's just a bit annoying. And in this particular game, Modern Warfare 3, I feel as if... I feel as if skill-based matchmaking has been dialed up a little, just a little bit, but it incrementally goes up every year. That's just to be expected. Some people will tell you that the average skill of the average card player is, like, not going up. It It is, guys. It just ultimately is, and we do need to accept that. However, because there's a higher skill ceiling in Modern Warfare 3 now, there's a lot more mechanics which can be abused by good players. It means that we're getting harder lobbies in general because now there's a bit more pressure on skill-based matchmaking and EBMM to actually keep us away from the Billy No Mates who like essentially have no skills or hand-eye coordination. And unfortunately, that is just the way that is. And it just can bogs my head that SBMM, though incrementally went up, is it's it's not the let's forget it. EBMM is the fucking killer because that's been from what was probably a 5 on the dial. That's been dialed up to 11 and my god you can feel it. So let's just talk about a few examples which I've noticed just in two weeks of playing Modern Warfare 3. And to be honest, this is why you're seeing zombie lobbies because I just needed a fucking break from it. Like it's just mantle, mantle, mental. And yeah, it's nuts because it affects you in solo, in solo queues. So 
if you're in solos, you, you're you getting your clones. Like, you are getting exact copies of yourself in lobbies. And the problem with that is that they'll be playing the same class as you. They'll be as aggressive as you or as passive as you as you on the objective. And it will also have people playing similar kill streaks as well. So you're just going to get your carbon copy clones. And, of course, this is a big criticism of skill-based matchmaking. I'm playing in fucking, like, servers all the way in Asia. How? 200 ping, 150 ping, that's mental, yeah, mental, 66 million people in the UK, yeah, well, who have signed to say that they live in the UK, probably more, and you're telling me that it can't find another 11 people who are in the UK, absolute bullshit, uh, it's, like, even Europe, like, I'm getting put in Russian servers, like, what, how is that a thing, why is that a thing, and... I just, it just absolutely boggles my mind that that is an effect. That Activision see that as an effective strategy. Now, don't get me wrong. I think Sledgehammer deserve massive praise for what they've been doing. But like putting the game together as quickly as they have, but the fact that they've had to use Activision's patented technology, it ruins what would have been a great game and what would otherwise be an incredible achievement. Also, in a solo queue, you're gonna have people who are just absolutely spamming kill streaks especially if they're any good and it's just an absolute chew on now this doesn't get any better when you squad up though there is not the same symptoms there are other symptoms just as bad so for example when if you're when you were in, like a squad game in game in game ebmm takes effect now what is in game like what is in-game? What does it do? What's the in-game management do? It's a lot more prominent. So you'll have noticed that when you're with a squad and you're on like a three or a four win streak, it's going to start spawning you at the other side of the bastard map to objectives and start putting players who are shit on the other team with KDs of 0 0.5. It's going to spawn them on the objective or at least a few feet away from the objective. You can't, like, in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare, I would just simply have someone do a spawn flip and you could reverse it. Especially if you know where the hard points are. You reverse it, flip the spawns, and that will be fine. But now the game doesn't let you. You flip the spawns, it will just put someone spawning on you, staring at you. They will obviously kill you, and you will spawn at the far end of the map for the next hard point. Good luck with that, mate. So the solution to that is tactical insertions. Great, but that means I now can't use trophy systems for the infinite fucking frag grenade spam, which has damage which is so broken it even bypasses EOD. What the actual fuck? What the fuck? Get a grip. I've been running for this for nearly fucking eight minutes now. Wow. So that's just the in-game management. And it really bugs me. Now, oh, dual queue. So if you're not with a full squad, say three, four, five, six, and obviously you're not by yourself, dual queue is the fucking worst, man, because you will get the effects of both. You will get your clones and you will be getting this in-game management where you're getting spawned miles away from the objective because you've won one too many games. And the people who have bought skins, the people who are buying bundles are not winning enough games, so you need to be put at a massive disadvantage. Get back to the other end of the map and let the people with the skins win because you've got to fucking know your place, average player. Damn right. Oh, I told you we were getting a bit heated. <laughs> but I've also noticed that as well, and this really fucks me off, actually. I've also noticed, especially when I'm going into lobbies with other people who have got that stupid fucking Groot skin as well, that... If people with these skins and the bundles and all that stuff, which I haven't bought any of for COD, well, I'll talk about that in a second, actually, but I hadn't bought any for COD. If you're up against a team of these players and you're playing too well, I've noticed the game will just fucking sign you out in-game. Like, it is outrageous, and it won't replace you. Like, it'll just be 4v5 or 4v4. Two people having a really good game? Off your fucking go, mate, but can't be having that. The people who have bought skins need to have a good game. Fuck the rest of yous, fuck your talent, and fuck your squad. You're fucking off, you're crashing, you're signing out. And it's just absolutely unacceptable that that happens. And it never happens when I'm having a bad game. Never happens when I'm having a bad game. Only happens when we've started the game off really strong, we've captured A and B, and I've got a bit of a foothold on the objective, picking up double kills, and I've noticed just before I get me Blackbird, bang, you're gone. It always happens after I get a VTOL, call it in, I've got one too many kills that the game likes, these people aren't getting enough kills who have got the skins, so you're fucking off every time. Signed out. 
doesn't happen to anybody else. And I know it's not my computer because my computer is high spec and it happens, to, I noticed it happened to other people as well. Other people in the squad might be having a really good game, popping off, they'll just get fucking booted out. And I've noticed it's always the person that's top of the fucking leaderboard that'll get kicked out mid game if you're having too good of a game against a full squad of, well, basically people who are buying bundles and skins and it really, really, really fucks me off. Oh, and yeah, no, I haven't even talked about the worst bit yet. If you're put in a game, especially as a duo, this happens all the time. It will, if your stats or whatever, it will put people of six, who are all using the fucking Groot skin, by the way. It'll put them in a team of six. I've got an agenda again. This is Groot skin, haven't I? It'll put you in a, against a team of six as a four. And it will always be either a third of the way through the score limit or a third of the way through the time limit. It will then give you two players who don't play the objective. This has happened. This happens at least twice a night when I play. At least every single time. 4v2 for the first third of the game, then it comes in, then you're playing catch up. So I've just started fucking leaving lobbies when that happens. I know I, I don't, I'm not a quitter, but when I say shit like that, nah, nah, fuck them. I'm not playing that game. I'm not playing that lobby. I should have a, a, a win loss ratio of four. It's free because of shit like that. <sighs> yeah, really, really, really fucks me off. And yeah, don't get me wrong, more often than not, would win those games because of course we do. But even if I got to a point where I started outperforming those odds, or we started outperforming those odds, one of us would get kicked. Fancy that. I'm getting really annoyed here, working myself up. I'm going to have I'm going to talk you way into a sore throat or a loss of voice at this rate. But it must be said, all of this disappears. All of this is less brutal, right? If you just buy the battle pass. You think I'm talking shit? I experimented with this literally last night. Last night, bought the battle pass with the coins I already had from like miles miles ago. Like, so I didn't pay for it, but just bought the battle pass, and bang, easy your lobbies straight away. Not a problem. Even solo queuing, duo queuing, which I said was the worst. Absolutely fine. You're getting put in. I notice it. You're getting put in lobbies with people who don't have the group skin, who don't have these blueprints, who don't have any of the battle pass Halloween special like operators or anything like that, you get none of that and your games are a lot easier. And heaven forbid, or heaven forgive, like I'm getting easier spawns. Like I'm spawning much nearer to the objective now as well. It's fucking crazy. How long that'll last, I don't know, but oh, it's just like instant, instant improvement. The games were a little bit harder, of course, but instantly better. So how did I make this better for myself? <laughs> well, I bought the Black Cell version. And guess what that did? Made my lobbies easier still. Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't seem to affect skill-based matchmaking that much. However, it does seem to affect the games that I play. So it'll affect, like, the like everything I've mentioned here, where it'll, it stops the fucking same insane, like, cloning of myself in solo queue. It stops the in-game management as much, or if it does, it happens in my favour now. I've noticed people who've been top of the leaderboard get fucking, like, kicked or timed out. Well, should I say timed out? I'm ranching, that's what it looks like when I get kicked. But they're getting absolutely yeeted from the lobby when they've been doing too well. And from the other perspective, like, it's just... What? Like, how is it fair? Like, the integrity and thrill of competition is the fact that you are playing with people, if you are in a lobby where it's your equal, you at least get a buzz of like beating them where it's a level playing field. If someone's gonna be better, like the top performing player of that lobby and then it becomes a steamroll just because I bought some skins. What? No, like it oh, just takes all the fun out of the game. Uh, do I still enjoy Modern Warfare 3? Yes. Would it be miles better without this shit? Yes. <laughs> so yeah, and it's not a placebo effect, guys. It literally happened instantaneously. Just uh, nuts, but yeah. But in general, now that more people are playing for wins, which is nice, more people are playing the objective in general across the board, which is nice, EUMM is now playing you. You are not playing it. And uh, you're not going to have any joy of it unless, of course, you buy a blueprint, skins, 
whatever else. So what's the conclusion of this video? What's the conclusion? Fucking squad up, have a gimp in the lobby and buy some bastard skins. Then, and only then, you will have an enjoyable experience in Modern Warfare 3. So I've took one for the team here, I've bought some of this shit, and now we're all getting easier lobbies. Call me a saint or call me part of the problem. Let me know in the comment section below which it is, and let me know what your opinions are of skill-based matchmaking, and more specifically, EBMM, or EOMM, which is technically called, but whatever. Till then, guys, I've been Hoff on the Shadows Rain A1A YouTube channel. You guys have been amazing, and I will see you in the next video.